Welcome back. In this movie, we're going to talk about JavaScript and namely how to use variables and what is a variable, why would you care? Um, in the last movie, we talked about functions and a function is a set of code that is reusable that performs a certain task. So sometimes, well, you want to write functions that are reusable in a variety of situations. Uh, you don't want to rewrite functions just to make one little difference each time. And so let's say that you had a function that did something like uh, total up and add tax to to, uh, items in a user's shopping cart. Okay, so you want to write a function that would do that, but there are certain variables that would change in that. So, for instance, one visitor or one on your website may have three items in their shopping cart, and another visitor may have four items, and they're completely different. So, you want to be able to put those items into the function, and they're going to change depending on what the users put in their cart, basically. So, you're going to use variables to do this. So, think of a variable as a little box, and that little box contains data. Okay, so you can basically create the box, give it a name, and then put something inside of it. And so there are three types of variables that you'll run into. Now let's talk about how to declare a variable. Um, the first one we'll talk about is just how to put a number inside a box. So we'll say uh, to declare the variable, we write the word VAR, so that's short for variable. And what we're going to do is give the variable a name. Um, and one thing you got to remember is when you name variables is that you can't include spaces in them. So if I want to say number variable, which is a great original name here, um, it's going to freak out because it sees that space in there and it wonders what are you trying to do, include two variables. So you have two options here. Just get rid of it uh, and just use that. You can use camel case, which is to use an uppercase V, if that makes more sense to have two words combined. Or you can use an underscore. So the no variable number variable. And then to put something in here, all we, all we have to do is say equals five. Put a semicolon. Remember, you have to have the semicolon to shut the sentence down. So what I've done is I've declared a variable. That variable is called number variable, and I've set the the uh, value of that to five, okay, which is a number variable. There are two other types of variables. Um, variable, and we'll call this string variable. And I could call this variable Dave if I wanted to. I'm just using these names so you'll understand. A string is a set of text. And much like in the last example, when we alerted some text, um, what we're going to do is use quotes. And you can use double or single. Just keep them consistent. And I'll say, this is a message. And so that is what's known as a string. Or maybe to make it less confusing, let's say this is a string. Not a sting, a string. There we go. And so that is the second variable type. There is a third variable type, which is known as Boolean. And what we're going to do is let's establish that. Let's say variable, and then we'll say Boolean. Spell like that variable. Variable equals. And a Boolean variable is one of two things it's either true or false. So let's just say true. And this may be a little confusing, but there are times where you need to know if something is either a yes or no, or it's on or it's off, or something like that. So a Boolean is really at the root of computer programming, you know, where you have zeros and ones. And those are your three variable types. We have numbers, strings, and Boolean variables. Now, the reason that we have three different ones is because um, there are certain things you can do to one that you couldn't do to another. And so that's why it's important to declare these different types. So for example, if I needed to do math, okay, so if I needed to, to uh, you know, do a mathematical equation on something, then I need a number variable or an integer variable, which we've done up here with, with the five. It could be 5.2 if you wanted to make it a fraction or something like that. There are certain things that you need to be able to do with strings that wouldn't you wouldn't be able to do with mathematical variations, so numbers wouldn't work there. And there are things that you need to do that are Boolean that uh, don't make sense to do as a string or a number. So anyway, that's basically your three variable types. Now, what I can do is we can, let's use that alert function again, alert. And then, in my parentheses, let's put the semicolon to, in the parentheses, rather than using the quotes now, you can just write the name of the variable in there. So we're going to alert the number variable. So let's just call it number variable. Okay, And now when I run this, you can imagine what's going to be in the alert box, the number five. So let's go ahead and open the, uh, the uh, file in the browser, and you can see that there we have five. Okay, And I can change that out. So if I want to change that to another variable, let's change that to the Boolean variable. I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste that. And uh, whoops, I am totally messing this up here. Okay, so let's alert the Boolean variable, and it's going to say true. No big deal. And let's go back and finally we can uh, we can uh, alert the string variable as well. And uh, let's go ahead and do that. It looks like this is a string. So just to give you uh, um, an example here, one thing I can do is let's get a different number. Let's say let's alert the number variable. 
uh, variable, and then let's say plus two. Okay, so now we've we've basically kind of we could make a function out of this. I didn't. We're just putting it directly into the alert function. But I've done some math here, so I'm just going to say basically to alert the number variable plus two. And let's see what happens on this. Let's go ahead and refresh the page, and it came up with the number seven. So um, that's important to be able to understand, and that's why you want variables in there. So maybe you use a form, maybe you use uh, some global variables when people put things in their shopping cart, and then you can write functions around these based on those variables. So anyway. I hope that makes sense and in the next movie we're going to talk about how to combine variables and functions to start getting some interactivity and some uh, you know another layer of uh, stuff into a web page so anyway I will see you guys in the next movie